I've got a welding job to do here for a friend. It's a cast iron grate out of a fire. Uh, we can't get one. I don't know how we managed to break it, but it certainly broke it. As you can see that fits onto there like that. What I'm going to intend, wait, what I intend doing with it, I'm going to bronze weld it uh, using a silicon bronze rod and a TIG welder. I'll grind the V's out into it, grind it out, V it out, clamp it down, tack it, and then weld it with uh, silicon bronze, or at least braze it with silicon bronze. The first thing to do is to, to V it out and get some of the rust off it. Just use a carbide bird to remove some of the Deep vein into it, plenty of penetration. Like a real, please, I'm not your dentist. I'm going to get a, a couple of tacks on the first just to hold it. I'm just going to weld this cool, no preheat at all. These are the settings that I've found to work on aluminium bronze. The well that's got a memory in it, and memory number three is the one that I use for aluminium bronze. We'll start at the beginning. Gas pre-flow, 0.8 of a second. I don't need any pre-flow because I'm using a foot pedal. As soon as I press the pedal, I get gas. Start amps, I've got it 30, so I get a nice crisp start. Oops, look, I don't need. Well now I've set to 90. ESA balance, I've got a 10%, 10% cleaning. Frequency, I've got 90 hertz. I found 90 hertz works well. Down slope I don't need. And numps as low as it'll go, which is five. And you have post flow, which is gas that comes out. Once you finish welding, I've got it eight seconds. This is not wasting gas, this actually helps to keep the tungsten clean and keeps it well covered in an organ till it cools down. Current and the AC. The, the, the AC is a good job of cleaning the, the cast iron. I've used the AC before with bronze, with bronze welding and it's um, most quite nicely. They're certainly stuck together.
and that repaired quite nicely. It just wants a little flash over with the, the ground, it'll be good to go. No signs of cracking. Quite a nice repair. The spindle on this Harrison lathe has what they're calling L00 taper. It's a taper there with a big key in it. What I need to make for this is a protector to go on here when I'm using the lathe without a chuck on it. A friend's lent us a one to copy off that simply goes on there, screws on there, and protects the taper. You can see where some clumsy bastards actually caught that with a, a tool, probably one of the best mean machining with a centre in there. So I'm going to make one of these. To make one of these, I need to be able to accurately cut that taper. I've got no idea what it is in degrees, I don't need to know. All I need to know, all I need to be able to do is cut the taper accurately. I've also got to make a dummy nut like that, so when I cut the thread, I've got something to try on the thread to make sure it's a, a good fit. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the compound slide to cut that taper. The compound slides, similar to held in place by two half inch nuts, one there and one at the back, and that's able to rotate. I need to set it at an angle like that which is the exact same angle as the angle of the lathe mandrel. Before I start using clock gauges, I'm going to simply set the tool post up dead parallel to the compound slide, simply by putting a block of steel onto there, hold that up against the tool post, that's locked up, so now the tool post is running in line with the compound slide. I've got a bit of key steel here in the tool holder, the centre of that's on the centre of the lathe. All I need to do now is basically make sure that this key steel is touching all the way down that taper and that's going to put this compound slide at the same angle as that or at least very near the same angle to the state where we can start using the clock gauge to get it absolutely perfect so you can see how it's moving I'll bring the camera in on top so you can actually see what I'm, what I'm looking at right, as I wind the cross slide in and out you can see how it goes one way then the other way so when that stops moving, it's going to be perfectly which is about about there. We'll lock it up with that. So now we know the compound slide is approximately the same angle as that. Now we can put a clock gauge on and get it absolutely perfect. I'm looking at the graduations on the compound slide and it says 10 degrees so that probably is a 10 degree taper. Right, so you can see it from the back as well. So now with the compound slide like that it means the tool is going to be cutting that taper. So if I put a clock gauge on here touching that and I wind that up in and out once that clock gauge reads a constant zero or the full travel that also means that this compound slide is set at exactly that angle. One thing you must make sure is that the clock gauge is on centre height. As you can see that's actually too high. We'll drop it down a bit. Fanny's hair more. Focus you bastard. Right, and that would certainly appear to be on centre height. Or at least as good as my eyes can tell it's on centre height. I've got a clock gauge set up here. It's actually a clock gauge that my friend Bob took apart and cleaned and put back together again. One of the brand new ones, the Joe Givers, it's going to be in this week's giveaway. This is actually going to be the actual, the actual gauge that's going to be given away. It is metric, so I'm going to have to work in metric. 
but I haven't got a working melt rigid. It doesn't really matter what the calibration is, that needle hasn't got to move. It's as simple as that. I've got to get this dialed in to cut that tape up perfectly. One full turn on this is one millimetre. Obviously up ten is a tenth of a millimetre. And one little division is a hundredth of a millimetre, which is probably considerably less than a fanny's hair. Right, so we've got a tenth of a mil run out. So if we gently tap the compound and zero it again. Zero. Then we've still got a tenth. So that wants to come this way towards me. It's just simply a case of persevering until you get it until it's not moving now, I've spent a pleasant 20 minutes tapping and teasing from zero clock gauge I'm going to wind it back under under power so to speak using the the adapter on the drill As you can see that's less than, it's less than a hundredth of a mil. I'll take it back in again. Right, so that's actually less than a funny's hair, a lot less. I'll nip the cup, I won't stay up at that, and then try it once more. That's pretty good. I've tried the digital gauge on it. I've got a bob that it used to can work on the thousands. between one and one and a half tenths of a thou that's inches, tenths, hundreds, thousands, tenths of thous so it's between 1.5 and two tenths of a thou the funny's here this is the gauge I normally use Right, that's not moving at all, so happy with that. Excellent. Once again, it's just to say a massive thanks. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. And as usual, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that keep coming in towards um, the way dead me dad. Absolutely fantastic it is. Thanks very much. Right, I've got a clock cage sitting up here, a nice big fierce clock cage. It's actually one of the one of the one one of the one of the ones, you bell end.
Thank you.